Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first official Ice Season 21 video. And we are going to start this season off with a gear video. I'm gonna go through everything that I use, everything that I need to go ice fishing. We also have some new toys we'll be talking about later in this video. Uh, one of them being a new philosophy in shack type that we're using this year. And uh, this video will be a long one. However, the description is gonna be the most important part. I will have timestamps for everything. If you wanna see me talk about the new shack, there'll be a timestamp, you click it, it takes you right there. If you wanna just see what I use for a K drill and my drill setup, things like that, it's all timestamped below. As well as below that, there will be all of the Amazon links to everything I use uh, and anything that uh, I think is useful out on the ice. So make sure you use that description on this video and click on the things you wanna see and listen to. Uh, but otherwise, we are just gonna hop right into it. And we're gonna start with the shack. Uh, we are gonna talk about why we chose it, once it's set up, we'll talk about the modifications we're going to make, things like that. But let me get out of the box and we'll talk about it then. Okay, so I'm editing this right now. Uh, I'm going to put all the fish shack stuff at the end. So as you can see in the timestamps below, if you want to see about this fish shack, make sure to skip to that time code. There's a lot of info. There's a lot of good things that I talk about. And I will be making future videos about the shack as a whole, just the shack, because I'm about to do a ton of modifications to it. But anyway, I just wanna let you guys know, I know I said we're gonna start with the shack, but let's start with some augers instead, shall we? Let's, uh, let's move on to our next product I wanna talk about, and that is what auger I use, and why I chose the auger that I have. Because, man, it is a auger paradise. There's endless options these days, there's a million things that you can use, that you can do, to get an auger up and running. So, so for an auger, I have some suggestions, but I'll go over what I have first. So I have a Ryobi P251. It's a brushless hammer drill, and it only has 750 inch pounds of torque. Now that's the minimum for what K-Drill uh, specifies to use. I have it on a clam auger plate adapter. And then I have a seven and a half inch. So they, they have new models this year. So they have an eight and a half inch, which is probably an eight inch, um, and a seven and a half inch. They have them labeled properly now. So when I bought this one, it was labeled as an eight inch and it's not actually eight inches. But now, don't worry about it. If you, they have the actual sizes listed. So if you want an eight inch, you can get it. Um, but that is what I have attached to the clam auger plate. And this is my setup. I do not suggest buying this or any version of this if you do not already have the drill. You can get a 24 volt Strike Master 8 inch auger for like 324 these days. I would buy that 10 out of 10 times. Um, I got fancy with it. <laughs> uh, I find it really convenient to have the nice handles. You can set it down in the snow without worrying about it because the handle keeps your drill and everything off the snow and the slush. Um, so I like the clam auger plate. I suggest you get it if you already have the setup, you're ready to go for the season, you just wanna invest another 60 bucks. But I just wanna let you guys know uh, the number one reason if you are gonna go a drill route that I suggest a K drill over anything else is this. This is the main difference between the Eskimo drill bit, the Strike Master, uh, flight, Light Flight, and the K drill. Chipper blades. Uh, I am a huge, massive proponent of the chipper blades. They're going to take more torque, they're going to cut holes slower, and they are going to drain your battery a little faster than the other ones. With the Eskimo pistol bit and the Strike Master, even though Strike Master has a little bit of grooves, uh, they are shaver blades. So you're gonna cut faster, you're gonna cut more holes, uh, but the number one thing is they are going to dull. So if you do not want to have to do with sharpening blades or you do not want to deal with replacing blades, chipper is the thing you'll want. The hand auger that I had with shaver blades, out of the box I was blown away. By mid ice fishing season, I needed to sharpen them. And that to me is a massive problem. Uh, and even with my least powerful drill that you can put on this setup, I still get 25, 30 holes out of one battery. So. That's more than enough for me. Even with this new system where I wanna go zip around, I got two batteries, that's 60 holes. Uh, if you're going basin bike crappie, anything like that, 
you're going to want more than 60 holes. I understand. Uh, but if you have a more powerful drill, you'll get more holes out of one battery. If you've got a Milwaukee that puts out 1,200 inch pounds of torque, you're going to probably get one and a half times what I get. You'll probably get 50 or 60 out of your one battery. I have two other videos on the channel. Click up here to see them. Uh, but anyway, that's enough about the auger. Let's move on. Uh, the iFish Pros are absolutely game changing when it comes to ice fishing. I love these. I will be buying the new 2.0s. When you go out and buy these, they'll come insulated. I insulated my own with just an old hole cover. Uh, they come insulated now. So if you buy the 2.0, you're getting an insulated one for $49. Um, these are just absolutely my favorite way to tip up fish, hands down. So I just have a fairly cheap Sonicore by 13 Fishing, and, uh, and that is what I use to go tip up fishing. Uh, it's super simple. Your hands will thank you at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the night, or in the morning when you're setting up, because uh, it, it's so quick and easy. You just have a bobber stop on your line somewhere that hits when fish are tearing line. It hits the little plastic piece here. I don't know how well you guys can see it. This isn't a tutorial on these. I have a whole review on the channel about these, but just as a quick example, you'll leave your bale open. There's a bobber stop. The fish runs with it. It pulls that, the flag goes up, the line's being tore out. You walk over, close the bale, catch the fish. Pretty explanatory. I love this system the most. However, I will let you know I've never used a jaw jacker. I know people love them, but I don't know, I don't, I don't know about buying a pole to put that much pressure on it all the time, like a jaw jacker needs. Um, but hey, to each their own, I also have a few, you know, old style tip ups. You know, I still own plenty of the, the regular tip ups, if you will. But when you're wrapping these up at the end of your hands are freezing. Uh, I, am, I am trying to replace all of these with iFish Pros. Um, just because at the end of the night, you reel your pole up, you fold in two things, and it's done. You're done for the evening. Oops, I did that the wrong, I folded it the wrong way. Bad example, boom. Put in a bucket. Well, I've used a milk crate this year, but throw in the milk crate and you're done. You're all put away for the day. It takes 30 seconds compared to the couple minutes of getting that line wrapped up and getting these so they don't tangle. So there's a plenty of reasons to buy them. Go ahead and go see the whole review if you want to see how they work and how they how you use them. I don't want to tip up fish any other way. So trying to get my whole fleet to be those. Anyway, speaking of rods and reels, let me quick go over my favorite setup. There's a million of them out there. You can do so many different styles of rods. And the big debate between spinning rod or inline, you know, there is a big debate out there about are the inlines worth the money to a spinning rod? And, you know, there's a video out there with the pros, uh, I'll link it right here, where they talk about inline versus spinning and what they use, and damn near every one of them said spinning rod still. As a weekend warrior, if you will, because that's really what I do, I winter camp is the best way that I can explain it. Um, inline is the only way I'll go. I pulled in plenty of Mille Lacs walleyes with this inline right here um, with nine pound test, which is way more than any pro would use as well. This right here is my favorite setup. If I have to recommend any one rod and reel combination, it is this one right here. Uh, this one is a medium light 27 inch tickle stick with a 13 fishing Black Betty Ghost Edition. This rod I find to be perfect from going ahead and trying to catch those panfish, because I mean that tip is so sensitive, to going to pull out walleyes. And I caught a few big ones last year on this setup right here. You can go out, hammer crappies, you can do everything. It's the most versatile setup you can buy. If you just have one, more, one rod and one reel to go fishing, this is what I would buy nine out of 10 times, is this right here. The action of dropping that bait down is so simple. You just pull the trigger, that line comes out, you let go, it stops. Uh, and in the really cold days when you're outside fishing and it's freezing up, you can still just use the two fingers. You can pull this, but hold your bail, and still hand line it out. Just like you would a spinning rod, a lot of times when the ends are icing up and stuff, you just hold your finger on there, keep it from unspooling itself, and then you're good to go. And then reel it up as you need. 
but I will say one last thing. If you are gonna get an inline reel, there's one part of it. You can get all different styles and types. You know, like this one's just a push button on the side. There's all kinds of different brands, but the number one thing to look at when you're getting into them is right along the body, is there a gap or not? If there is the slightest gap, like this one's got a pretty small gap. I don't know if it's, if it's focusing or not. <laughs> this one's got a pretty small gap, but you get line jump on that one. And what I mean is the line can get outside the bail and unspool, and sometimes you get a tangle in there. Uh, that can be really frustrating, especially if you're trying to get back up and down on a crappie, like a crappie school. Um, so if you are gonna go buy an inline, make sure to pay attention to that body right there. If there's any sizable gap, you'll probably have line jump once or twice. And the very last thing we're gonna talk about, I believe, is flasher system. There's one that if you have the money, it is a no questions asked, go buy it right now. And that is called a Garmin Panoptics. Don't get fooled though. You need the with live scope version. If you have 13, $1,400, ready to invest there's only one option and that is the live scope it's absolutely incredible go youtube it right now there's no sense in even watching the rest of this talk go google garmin pen optics live scope uh but if you don't want to spend uh kidneys worth of money i think the perfect middle of the road is an fl18 from vexlar now they're not all created equal, not only from a package standpoint, but also a transducer standpoint. As you can tell, these are very different. My Vexlar I find to be less affected by not only bugs at night, you know, when you get that grain, but also interference from other Vexlars. I experience it a lot less than everyone else, and I believe it's because I have a different transducer. I have what they call a ProView transducer. It's a technical tri-beam that you control with the gain. As you turn the gain up, it widens that beam. That can be problematic, obviously. You're turning your gain up. You're going to get grain. It's gonna get fuzzy. I believe because of that different transducer, I'm less affected by by the interference of others. Nine out of 10 times. It's, it's insane how much better mine can be at times. Uh, when you have perfect conditions outside, they're equal. They, you know, they do, they are the same thing. You have your bottom lock and your low power mode and your normal mode and your auto zooms. Those are all the same on here. But when you go to buy one, you have to pay attention to what transducer it comes with because they are all very, can be very different. There's three options. There's a nine, a 12, and I wanna say a 16. I'll put it right here if I'm wrong, uh, degree transducers, and it's very important to look at the details about them, do some research. I will admit right away, this ProView has terrible reviews, apparently it's failed for a lot of people, but it has been absolutely nothing but phenomenal for me. So if you can find this package right here, it's a Pro Pack with the ProView transducer, that is the way I would go, it's a perfect middle of the road, you don't need an FL28 but you definitely want more than an FL8 if you're going the Vexlar series. There's other brands out there. I know the I know the Hummingbirds look really good. They have that gray scale uh, display. It looks awesome. Uh, the only one I've seen in person didn't function the greatest. Uh, at night, it was absolutely useless. Uh, could be the user, but I didn't get involved. Just saying. Uh, then you got the Markhams out there in the world. Those are great. Then you have like the big summer and winter hummingbirds that you can get, that uh, you can get your graphs and everything on. Those definitely have their place on the lake if you want to have it. But if you're just looking for that mid-range, because I'm pretty sure on sale you can find these FL18s for like 320s, 350s. You can find them used for like 299. That is the route that I would go. It's a perfect middle ground. Just make sure you do your research on exactly what comes in the box because if you're expecting this ProView transducer, this tri-beam, you know, you get with a selector maybe, but you get the, just the 12 degree, you may be disappointed by that. So you gotta make sure to do your research on exactly what you're buying because they have different versions of Pro Packs, they have Ultra Packs, they have 
gens versions that come with different transducers and they're different prices you gotta look at the details there's just so many options in the vexlar line it can get kind of confusing so make sure you're doing your research before you actually go purchase any of them but like i said there is a million options out there ice fishing is becoming more and more popular which kind of sucks for the lakes uh they're getting busier however it's great for the companies that are innovating to trying to stay ahead you're coming out with the garmin live scopes and things yeah they're a million dollars but it can change the industry uh phenomenally in great ways for the consumer so that's enough rambling on that there's a there's a lot of options of all of these things everything that i've shown you there's so many different options it you just have to tailor it to how you want to fish what your budget is and what you're targeting uh, those three things will be your determining factors if you already have uh, you know a tow behind drop down trailer you may switch up what you're going to get for fishing poles and, and electronics something you can have more permanent in the shack different rods and reels that fit what you're going after if you only target crappies and and uh, perch and bluegills you're going to want a lot of ultra light stuff you won't want these big rods that I use I use 27 and 25 inch rods for everything across the board so you just got to be careful you just got to make sure you do your research make sure you look up a youtube video or two about any and all products that you're going to be using out on the lake someone has reviewed it and someone has done a good job explaining it it's not gonna it's probably not me but you can find the information that you need uh it's all out there and usable but i will i will admit one thing so far uh that i do not like but it is what it is there's a manufacturing defect in my seat rails. Let me show you what I mean. So you see how this pole, this pole has uh, two extra holes in it. None of these other four have those. This one only had those two holes in it. I had to drill my own to get it on there, how it's supposed to be. So from the factory, they had that part and they punched the holes in it wrong. So I, I don't even know how something like that could happen, but it did. So I had to drill new holes for it. But so far, setup has been really easy. Other than that, I just got these brackets on and now I gotta start doing the poles, which I'm assuming that will be the confusing part. So I'll come back as soon as All the right. poles are on. Got the metal frame together. Whoa. All right, and ladies and gentlemen, just like that, she's all set up and built and ready to go. I'm just gonna let it air out for the night. There's a little bit of a chemical smell coming off of the fabric but that's all right. Uh, let's go over what I love about this shack right now. Floor space, there is 26 square feet of fishable area here. Uh, it is essentially five feet, a little bit of it is under the sled, but it's five feet by five feet essentially. That's, that's about what you can imagine out of the floor space alone, out of the fishable area. So that is five feet by five feet roughly. Pretty close. I got one that is perfect for what I needed. So my categories were, it needs to fit in the bed of the truck with the tailgate up. So it's only 64 inches. The sled is only 64 inches wide. Oh, well, long? Whatever you, wanna, whatever you wanna say. That was like the number one category I was looking for when I went to buy one, is how big is the sled? If it was more than 64 inches, it wouldn't fit and I didn't want it. Two, it had to have side doors. I didn't care about a front door. I only wanted side doors. It's perfect and they're massive. They go damn near all the way to the front. So that is perfect. Number three, gotta be able to stand up, stretch, do whatever you can and I can stand up all the way to the front of it. That was my last category of necessities. Standing up, side doors, fit in the back of the truck. So with all of those parameters set, this was like the only one. All the other ones, like the otters and stuff that were, that I went to look at, that were small enough to fit in the back of the truck, I couldn't stand up in or didn't have side doors. It was all sacrificing something except for this one. So this one, the sacrifices are, there's no back door and that's about it. <laughs> I wanna say there's more, but the seats, the judgment is out on the seats. I'll have to wait till I sit in them for like a good day, but the initial comfort is really good and I'm really happy about the rigidity of them. Uh, Cause I know my boat seats, they'd probably be pretty comfortably mounted in here, but you, they feel like they're gonna break all the time. These do not, these are all solid, it's all metal and it feels good. We decided to go from a hub 
to the flip up because we got the side by side now. So because we got the side by side, I am picturing my season of ice fishing to be a lot more running and gunning. Um, and with the side by side, you can hook up the tow bar to this and it's as simple as flipping it closed and you're on the move already. And having the side by side's bed, we didn't need a massive sled because you'll keep most of it in there. I'm gonna mount my ice auger on the back and stuff. Everything's gonna be in the back of the side by side and only the things you need to fish will be in the shack. So that was why we changed from a hub to a flip up. The hub is perfect, it was great, it was massive. I love fishing in the hub, but every time you wanted to move, you just, you always catch yourself going, all right, we'll give it 15 more minutes if there's no fish, we'll move. And then you'll, you'll, you'll mark one or something, it's 15 more, and then you end up never moving. So I'm hoping this alleviates that this year and that we go after the fish more than wait for them. This, this was the big toy. This is the big purchase of the year. How nice it is. Like, look how big this side door is. This is incredible. I can promise you, you won't find another, another flip over for this price that meets this many expectations. Hub versus flip over. What do you guys prefer? Are you like me where you realize there's two situations? If you got a family, you got some kids, a hub's the way to go just because the, the room and the price off the lot, if you will, uh, is incredible. Or are you a flip over because you love to run and gun and this is the best way to do it is with a flip over. Let me know, let me know in the comments what you guys think as well. I got a cheap Eagle Claw rod locker. It's hard case so I can toss it in and out of the truck once the poles are in there. And I have my tip up bucket that will be, it's gonna be fading out, but it is set up right now with two straps that hold all the tip ups and then all the stuff like my dipper and everything is inside the bucket. Um, but that's it. That's it, that's all of my products for ice fishing. Anyway, I don't know how to end this video so we're just gonna cut it off here. I think I described everything in enough detail to get the point across. Uh, but if you have any questions about any particular product, make sure you ask it down below. I'll make separate videos for them if need be. I do have one rev actual review up on the channel, the iFish Pros, where I go very in depth with them about their flaws, the things you need to pay attention to when buying a rod for them, the kind of line you should use. I go in pretty depth with the problems I've had with them and the solutions they have come up with. Anyway, I'm still rambling. Make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. Thank you to all the new subscribers that have been flowing in recently. I appreciate every last one of you. And if you've made it this far in the video, it ain't gonna hurt to go click. You, if you're willing to listen to me this long, this is the most I'll ever talk in a video, uh, unless it's Trail Camper Tuesday. But anyway, still talking. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and until next time, we'll see you on the lake.